I'm John, Technical Director at Horizon, and in this video, we're going to talk about binding and calibrating the 6100 series AVC receiver. Okay, so there are several things that are very important to understand about uh, AVC receivers. So, uh, and especially the 6110 and even the previous generation, um, 6000 and 4220s and so on. So the receiver has a function called auto orientation. So you need to install this in the vehicle. Of course, if it's in a ready to run vehicle, it's already installed. But if you're gonna install this in a separate vehicle, the receiver needs to be placed such that one of the flat surfaces like the bottom, the side, the top, or the other side is facing down and directly down. Okay, so in the case of the uh, tenacity, you'll see it's actually mounted on the side. You know, in the case of the uh, ARMA vehicles, the receivers are in a radio box, but they're mounted like this. You can also mount it, you know, inverted or upside down like so. So um, when you do that, however, during the binding process, the receiver senses the position that it's in. So the gravitational force is pulling downward and it knows if it's in this position, this position, and this position, and so on. So consequently, when you bind an ABC receiver, that's when it's gonna learn that auto orientation or which position that the receiver's in. So during the bind process, the receiver needs to be mounted in one of those positions and the car needs to be level so that the gravitational force is pulling in the direction. You know, we've talked to people, in fact, we've talked to people on the phone, They're, they bind like this, you know, and they push the button and they click, 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 boom, and then they everything connects and so on. They set the car down, it's all calibrated, but now the ABC doesn't work correctly. And that's because the gyro sensing of orientation is out of phase. So instead of when the car yaws to the right, it gives a left input. Now when the car pitches up, it gives a left input. So in any case, it's all out of phase. So, and that's important. So that's the first thing to understand. That's what auto orientation is about. Um, the second thing that you absolutely need to understand is before you bind and calibrate an AVC receiver, you need to have your transmitter set up correctly. So when I say correctly, um, when we're going through the binding and calibration process, and especially the calibration process, we're teaching the receiver the stick positions. When I say stick positions, the throttle position, you know, neutral, full throttle, full brake, right and left steering and center. Now, if something is affecting the position of that very much, the calibration will never occur. So some of the things that can affect that, for example, on the DX3, um, we have a throttle limiter. And if you have the throttle limiter set to 50%, it'll never calibrate. It just won't happen. So when you, um, when you go in to do a binding calibration, you need to set the settings on the transmitter correctly. The good news is it's real easy to do. Throttle limiter needs to be at 100%, okay? For almost every single speed controller, and definitely the smart speed controllers, throttle needs to be set to normal. The steering needs to be set in the correct direction for your vehicle. It's gonna vary in each case. You know, if it's a ready to run vehicle, it's already in the right position. So that's gonna be different. The next thing is steering rate, ABC steering rate. When you're buying to an ABC receiver, it really doesn't matter the position that's this in. Normally I turn it all the way clockwise. So ABC um, rate, steering rate doesn't matter. The brake rate, however, is extremely important. You need to turn the brake rate all the way clockwise. If you turn the brake rate counterclockwise, you'll never get full brakes and the receiver will never calibrate because it never sees that endpoint. So all the way clockwise, your steering trim and your throttle trim need to be centered or close to center. So go through and be sure your transmitter does that. They're set up like that. Throttle limiter, 100%. Steering rate, ABC rate, doesn't matter. Brake rate, very critical, all the way up. Steering trim and throttle trim set to the center. You have got to do that. If you don't do that, there's a high probability that your radio will not calibrate correctly. Okay, now we're actually gonna get into binding. So with this receiver installed, ready to go, with a freshly charged battery pack installed, um, go ahead and plug everything in. And then there's two ways to enter bind mode 
with the receiver. I'm gonna show you probably the most common way and that in the easiest way, and that's I'm gonna go ahead and the transmitter by the way is off, so there's no signal. I'm gonna turn the car on. And the car's powering up and then I'm gonna push the button. So the button is actually the spectrum bars, but I'm gonna push the button and hold it for a couple seconds and you'll see that there's a flashing light. So that flashing light indicates, or flashing LED is orange or amber, that flashing LED indicates that you are in bind mode, okay? So the next thing that you need to do is press and hold the bind button and hold it while turning on the transmitter. So when binding, it's a good idea to place the transmitter about two to three meters away from the receiver. That way the transmitter doesn't overdrive the receiver and you get a higher um, reliability of bind. Now watch the LED. The LED will flash a few times, it'll go out, and then it'll come on solid, okay? That's how you bind. Now every time you bind, it is absolutely imperative that you also calibrate. What calibration is, is teaching the receiver the throttle positions, the steering positions, steering and throttle directions, and also the, when I say positions, that includes the center position, full right, full left, full throttle, full brake. So um, you need to do that every single time you bind. But again, there's only, you only need to bind one time. So um, it's not a big deal. Now this is crucial. We already went through and set up our transmitter and we know that we have everything set up correctly. Tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and not set it up correctly. I'm gonna turn this brake rate all the way to the left, okay? So that's not gonna give me enough steering travel. Now this is really important, and this is an often overlooked part of binding an ABC receiver. Carefully watch the LED. And the process is first go to full throttle, and the LED will go out, okay? Release the throttle to center, the LED will come back on. Now I'm going to push full brake, and as you'll remember, we turn that brake rate down. I'm going to push full brake, nothing happens. I can't possibly calibrate unless this LED goes out. It's telling me that something is wrong. So watch what happens when I crank up the brake rate. I'm going to crank up the brake rate, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit brake, and now the LED goes off. That tells me that I have the brake set correctly such that it will calibrate the receiver to brakes. Release that. Again, um, when I release it to center, the LED comes back on. I steer full right, the LED goes off. I release it, it comes back on. I go left, release it. And after I go through that whole process, now I have control. By the way, during that, bind pro or during that bind and calibration process, the throttle is inactive until you get through the process. So the important points to know and understand during that whole process is, first, you have to pull center, full throttle, then brake, then it must be right steering and then left steering in that order. And at each one of those endpoints, the LED must go out, and when you return to center, it must come back on. If it doesn't go out, then it tells you there's a setting in the transmitter that's not working correctly. You don't have it set up correctly and it'll never calibrate. And we have a lot of customers that call us and say, you know, hey, it's not working right, my receiver's broken, send me a new receiver. And we talk them through this process and they're like, oh yeah, okay, I get it, I understand what's happening. And uh, you know, then they go on their way and everything's good. Now, there's one other thing that occurs that's really important to understand. It happens also fairly frequently. With this in the DX2E, there's a method by holding full brake and by holding full right um, steering and turning the transmitter on, I can actually adjust my steering travel, my brake travel, my throttle travel, and you know, independently right and left steering travel. And, um, and so if you go in and you reduce those significantly, the problem that you're gonna have is now the transmitter itself is set up to have less travel adjust than is necessary, which is about 80% of travel adjust. If you have anything lower than that, it's not gonna calibrate. So, and every, you know, everybody gets confused. So if you go through this process and you steer full right to full left and you have everything set correctly and it still doesn't work, there's a high probability that you've reduced those travels through stick programming or 
If you attach the dashboard, you can make adjustments through the dashboard, or if you use the dashboard, you can also select drive modes that cut down those travel adjusts. So, you know, you think, oh man, I, you know, what do I do now? Well, the good news is, here's what you do. It's real easy to do. And so turn the transmitter off. Then in order to reset the transmitter to factory defaults, meaning this is gonna be, you know, 100% travel. Actually, it's 125% with this radio, but so it's full travel, full travel on the brake and everything works like it normally did when it came out of the box. Super easy to do this. You steer full left, you hold full brake, and while doing that, you push the button and turn the transmitter on. Did you hear that? The wah, 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 wah. And then the green light comes on, you release. Now it's also important, turn off the transmitter, turn the transmitter back on. And now all those settings are set to factory settings. You can go through and rebind. And again, you're gonna do the same thing. You rebind, you calibrate, and you, um, the reason you rebind is so you can get back into calibration mode and then you confirm that you truly are hitting each one of those endpoints. So, okay, so hopefully that makes sense and hopefully that answers a lot of questions that people have out there that have kind of been struggling with uh, binding and calibration.